Welcome back to the coverage of YC's Liverpool 2016, where we're now going to continue with the top cut, the knockout portion of the tournament where it counts the most. It doesn't matter if you won all the rounds up until now. If you lose this one match, you're going to be out of the tournament. Against our better advice, Marcello Barberi did it. He went undefeated in the Swiss rounds. Yeah. He, I, I asked him, I was like, did you win the last round? He's like, yeah. Yeah, well, I have to redeem myself because he didn't win one particular event. I don't even know which one he was no, talking about. No, so he, he just spoke to me about it. He explained completely okay. why, why he feels like he had to win the last one. Why so, is that? So during YCS London, he snuck in from 33rd place and he, he, he said, I wanted to give back the bit of luck <laughs> that I uh, that I took <laughs> on that day. All right. So, so he he's kind of given back that that bit of luck now. I had he, to he promise him. I had to promise to him that I'm going to suspend my belief in the curse of Anubis that he's not going to get kicked out right away. Yeah. So uh, so we were kind of rooting for him. So that's yeah. So that's what he said. He said, "That's my my luck is over now. Mm. I I've I've given it back." Yeah, I and now I he wants to prove that he can win without luck. Yeah, I won YCS London in in proper fashion now because I've given that bit of luck back. <laughs> Gives it back. Yeah, All right. that's it. Let's try and bring up the top 32 um, pairings, um, if we can. There we go. It's a little bit uh, small, so you might have some issues reading all of this if you're yeah. not having a high-resolution monitor and very good internet connection. Um, we don't want to go through all of these, uh, but in the, at the top left, we actually do see Marcello going up against Jacob Smith. Uh, Marcello, of course, playing ABC. Jacob is playing Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, other matches that we want to highlight. Well, yes. our feature match of the round is going to be Thomas Rose versus Jake Quincy. That is the fifth, uh, fourth, fourth, match, fourth yeah. match, yes, the yeah. fourth match. But there's so many cool matches to talk about here. There's um, there's Chris against uh, Murray. Uh, the, so Murray's the, the tiny 12-year-old kid that's <laughs> blazing through all of, the, uh, all of the field here. And Chris, we saw playing... Um, Light Swan. Yeah. yeah, we would have featured Murray, uh, but uh, we already featured Chris this weekend, so we want to try to have somebody else on the stream. Yeah, and just below that is Finn Bakewell, current Worlds competitor for the Europe European group. Mm -hmm. yeah, had a great time at Worlds. Just below um, that is our feature match. Then even further down is Niccolo Mazzolini, who went to the World Championships um, two years before this year. Yeah. He's playing ABC. Yep. We get Alexander Hulch, who's playing Merman, who we saw in the feature match against Alpay Engin, right below him, who is playing Light Swan this weekend. Yep. So as you can tell, we got quite a bit of variety when we're talking about decks. Let's take a closer look at that variety. This is what the event looked like at the start of the tournament. 800 players showed up and a bit more, th uh, almost one third played ABC. This was the big deck going into the weekend. After seven rounds of Swiss, we performed a big, big cut, cut the field down to just 256 players. And now ABC um, actually increased in numbers, so it seems like, it w well, strength in numbers, of course, but it still was a good choice when we're looking at the relative values. Yeah. Um, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, Lights One, all of these decks. Lights One actually um, was almost going up, basically. Yeah. Um, this is one of the decks in relative numbers, of course. Mm -hmm. So this was a good choice for the weekend. Um, Magic Spectre, for example, not the best choice uh, be no. because it was in uh, fourth place before and fell to fifth. Not, not much of a movement, but a bit. Okay, let's take a look at the top 32 deck lists. Now, wow. here we have less than... Blue, eye, blue eyes just disappeared. <laughs> There's yeah. only one now. That's true, yeah. Blue eyes only one. And five other decks also showing again the variety. Uh, one of those other decks, of course, is Mermail. Uh, sorry, Mermail, we got there as well. Cyber uh, Angels? Cyber Angels is in, is in the top 32, um, confirmed. Then we also have a. Um, what was it again? Dark Synchro? Dark Synchro, yes, that's the, the one I was trying to say, yeah. Dark Synchro are also in there, so those are already two out of those other decks. Um, 14 ABC, what do you think about that? Yeah, as expected. Kind of as expected, yeah. It's c um, yeah, so it's not it's not a majority portion, but it's pretty Pretty, pretty close, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Absolutely. All right, guys. Two or three away. Easy. With that, you have a little bit of a statistical breakdown. Um, I think we've said all the things we wanted to say prior to this match, and um, the rest of the top 32 have already started, and since these rounds really become a little bit faster now. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to drag out the tournament too much. So let's take you to the table where Jake Quincy is going to go up against Thomas Rose, both from the UK.
Jake on the left, Thomas on the right. A couple of players asked uh, prior to this round, oh, I thought Jake has quit the game. Um, no, he has not. He's, uh, Jake, he's taking breaks. <laughs> Jake, Jake quits pretty much after every event and then comes back every time. That's <laughs> <laughs> one way to put it. <laughs> So yeah, I've seen. So talking about these deck lists, we didn't even get to talk about the deck list. So yeah, um, not yet. Yes, Thomas is playing some really strange stuff. <laughs> um, he's playing 50 cards for a start off. That's yeah. So he's basically playing an entire what you would consider like a pure burning abyss deck with the Phoenix Rhino Warriors and then you know all the burning abyss monsters and then speed roids. So as per usual. But then also playing the Phantom Knights. So it's not it's not like a pure burning abyss deck, but it, but it is with then extra Phantom Knights. <laughs> <laughs> but also he's playing a main decked three Chaos Hunter and a main decked Vanity Fiend. And <laughs> main decked um, triple Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. I think there's a there's a story to that deck. And yeah. it's definitely gonna be interesting to to hear to the, uh, listen to that. Jake, however, is kicking things off. He is playing the kind of feared A B C deck. Yeah. Um kicks kicks things off with a pot of desires. S does not have a union hanger. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries in the main deck. I'm going to put some work in here because uh, I think Jake is main decking Dante. Yes. Good. Main yep. decking Dante. He does have a Dante. Um, That's going to cause good for serious him. issues for Thomas Rose here. He also opened with the gold gadget. So if you had the choice between Union Hanger or alternatively a Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, what would you prefer to open with? Oof. That's a tough one. I know. Um, I'd say Union Hanger. Still Union Hanger. Just because overall it's a better card. So it's be it's more important to get your own engine going rather than slowing your opponents down. Yeah, because your engine generally will beat the Burning Abyss engine as well. Hmm. We kind of saw that in the in the round before when mm -hmm. um, one player draws into all of his side deck cards. Mm -hmm. Didn't really didn't really play out for him in the end. Yeah. So Jake. Uh, there's <laughs> the question about Necros. Um, the Necros player was 130th, so he did make it into day two, um, and that was going into round nine. So even if he won the last two rounds, I do not believe that he had a chance to... Uh here we see Ghost Reaper and Winter Chase straight out of the blocks here. So the Dragon Buster is getting banished. This is going to be a pretty interesting... Uh, I don't know why he's getting to see his extra deck. Because he banished all three. So both of these players are going to play without their their boss monster, so to speak, the the most important monster that they have, and both of them. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> just just checking everything. Yes, uh, Jake is going to be playing without the ABC, and Thomas is eventually, most likely, going to be playing without Dante. That's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, actually, yeah, you do get to look at your opponent's extra deck regardless. I thought it just banished them, but it doesn't. You, right. get to, you, you look and you get to banish them. So we see Thomas's hand on the right with a tour guide. Yeah. Uh, Finnish Rhino Warrior, Sir, Farfa, and now two more cards with a lure, one of which is going to get banished. Got a second tour guide. Is that correct? No, it's not correct. Doesn't make any sense what I'm saying. Um, yeah. So Thomas here is gonna. Okay, so that immediately commits him to playing Dante. And this is the moment in time where Jake is. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Ooh, Both of these guys rough. pulling the trigger. This means like this match is probably gonna take a long time now <laughs> because <laughs> because neither player have their boss monster. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. However, I think Thomas is at an advantage here because he's going to be able to just start making stuff like Breaksword and all these other Phantom Knight based hmm. monsters. You think he has more alternative ways to victory rather than uh, when you compare him to Jake? Yeah, exactly. He's got so much more options. Winter Cherries obviously hits, um, hits it much heavier. Turnaround is fair play. Yeah. There is one of these other 
rank three cards. Yeah, Lavia. He certainly can't get one of those Dantes back. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we should just confirm that again. Yeah, it needs to be special summoned correctly first, which yeah, definitely exactly. not the case. <laughs> Nowhere near. Yeah, he, he does have quite a few other trump cards. Yeah, t he's still able to special summon take Tombog because of Levia. What can Jake do with his second Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries? Is there something else that he can take out? Nothing. I think there's there's no other overlap. Yeah, I don't think there's a single other overlap. So we see Togai as well. This is pretty rough here for Jake. Yeah, he's got one dead card, so to speak. And then his, his all of his monsters cannot do what they're normally doing. Yep. You cannot assemble that ABC. <laughs> yeah, I've just been informed by one of our judges that Jake Jake said, and to quote, fun to see what these decks do without their best monsters. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very insightful. Uh, yeah, hopefully he's enjoying himself right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. It's weird when you start the game and you have the Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries and you think, oh, this is going to give me a big advantage. And then your opponent is like, oh, I can I can do that too. Yeah. And you said that uh, Thomas was actually uh, kind of a famous player in the UK. Yeah, he's he's very well known. Um, he, 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 I think he's most known for always showing up to the, or at least to me, he's always most well known for showing up to the LDS stage two and saying, can you do a traditional tournament, please? <laughs> I, I remember at the the last LDS stage two. I was it was the last tournament I ever played before joining Konami actually, and um, he was like running around the entire room. Has anybody got this? Has anybody got this? Has anybody got this? Trying to find a traditional deck to, mm -hmm. to put together, um, and yeah, he got to me and I said, "Yeah, sure, I've got an entire binder of my my uh, forbidden collection." And he was like, "Oh wow, you, you <laughs> have a forbidden collection?" Yeah, I have uh, one of every forbidden card. Okay, yeah. that's. That's interesting. So he he went he went straight in there. Oh, painful choice! Uh, all this, all these cards, and <laughs> yeah, he was playing Shadol with painful choice. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty strong. <laughs> you don't say, <laughs> uh, Dante. Yeah, I was about to say Dante should stay where it was. Yeah, it would be much better if you could magically move it back into the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Burial from a Different Dimension can do. Yeah, it's true. Although you can also return cards from your opponent back to the uh, graveyard, which we seen this weekend, yeah. and it was a really yeah. good move at yeah. the time. Yeah, it really was. All right, so Thomas has claimed control over the field, now attacking, dealing the first damage, and not not just a little bit. It's got to be a big swing, and uh, Jake just left with uh, 3,400 life points yeah. after those attacks, and um, now he has to well push through this field. It's quite good, actually. Yeah. And at least uh, Thomas has no back row. That's at least some good news. And none of those are going to interact, really. Gonna, yeah, they're, they're, there's nothing to be done in his opponent's turn. And also, it's not like one of them's Dante. <laughs> so he's not going to feel bad destroying them. <laughs> yeah. Whereas generally with Dante, you kind of feel a bit awkward destroying him. <laughs> How is he going to go on? Um, I, I don't think Jake's going to go on here. I think he's going to draw his card and then he's going to call it a day. Unless it's Union. <laughs> Right. Well, he does have a uh, Fallen Thresh and a Assault Core, but just those two is probably not enough. No. Let's see if we're going to see a comeback from yeah. Jake Quincy. Let's see what he can do here. Took a little while to settle on one particular feature match for this round. Yeah. Uh, as we said, we at first we wanted to initially we wanted to feature Murray, but um, his opponent has been featured before, and then. Of course, somebody wrote up, hey, how about the Jay Quincy match? And I said, yeah, like, I want to feature him, but he might not make it because we've seen this a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. And then I get the blame in the end. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want that. And I, I really want to be wrong right now. I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be right on that. Yeah. Well, certainly in this first game, it seems like Thomas is ahead. So the, the curse is hitting again. <laughs> In a way, it's it's not like any of these two were undefeated. No, uh, pretty pretty uh, similar standing, so to speak. Um, it's Thomas was the ninth seeded player, and Jake was twenty fourth. So uh, Jake has already taken two losses this weekend. Uh, he drew he drew another assault call.
think Jake's thinking here, okay, I need a I need a rank four that clears my opponent's boards and banishes four cards from his graveyard. What rank four does that? Alright. I certainly think that's that's the best play. He's gonna be able to attack over the Levia. So that investment's not really much use. Mm -hmm. Jake's still got a decent number of cards in his hand. He's going to be able to set the Twin Twisters if he really feels like it. Probably going to just... Yeah, I don't even know. It's kind He of can discard the Ghost Reap and Winter Cherries. Yeah, because it's not mm -hmm. much use now. Yeah, he just has to keep out of it. Okay. It's interesting. Both of these players with a stripped-down version of their deck, a severely crippled version of their deck, Yeah. trying to fight through this. Yeah, I think Jake... Jake's kind of banking on being able to... Jake's got a bigger toolbox left in his extra deck, whereas Thomas has got his good cards left, but minimal amounts of them. So he's going to be able to make another break sword here. Now, but that's the last kind of real good, good play, yeah. play for yeah. Tom here. And then after that, it's, it's all she wrote, you think? Yeah. So, so this one has to count. Uh, okay. I don't understand why he just did that. Why did he let Fafa just, just destroy it? Hmm. Oh, apparently he did have a third break, so I saw only two when he was going through his deck. Um, well, we got the deck list here, of course. No, we, do, we got oh, two. Oh, of course, of course the, other one, the other one got um, Castelled. Yeah, I just f I thought it's been dealt with. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, not quite. Right, no. so, so this okay. is, of course, yeah. looking good that's for Thomas again. That's that's a game. And by good, I mean really good. Yep. And there it is. Yeah. Two pokes. And that's more than a 3-4. And that means Thomas Rose is taking the first game in the top 32. <laughs> so now the side decks are going to come into play. Yeah. Jake's going to put his battle faders mm. in. For for Jake, it's going to be it's kind of weird because he he's part he's had part of his side deck in his main deck, so to speak, with that ghost ogre and winter cherries. Yeah, actually, he's main decking three of those. Yep. He always wants to draw into it, of course. Yeah, but I think he just got pretty unlucky here because his opponent is playing such such a strange ratio of cards. What's going to uh, come in or and come out in these decks? Okay, so... Jake is actually playing Union Scramble as well. <laughs> what is this? Light Ray Sorcerer. I remember playing that in Light Swan, but about five years ago. <laughs> we also have uh, three copies of a Kaiju in Jake's side deck and yep. three copies of Book of Eclipse, of oh course. Oh, yeah. White Ray Sorcerer. He looks like Chaos Sorcerer, but he's just got a white coat on instead of a black coat. <laughs> Must be special summon from your hand while three or more of your light monsters are banished and cannot be special summon in other ways. Once put in, you can target one of your banished light monsters and one face-up monster on the field. Shuffle the first target into the deck, and if you do, banish the second target. Whoa! That's really good. That's really, really good. So you think that might come in? That can... That ty that um it's actually that beats good winter cherries. Yeah, I was about to say that. Isn't that isn't that really good when winter cher because yeah, basically winter put cherries put enables this card. Yeah, and then you put back the Buster Dragon into your extra deck as the cost. That's some very interesting tech. It's hard to say because it's got old text, so I don't know whether the ruling on it would be that it works or not. Yeah, it's obviously old text because it's from, um, which set is it from? Galactic Overlord. I think that was pre-PSCT, so. Isn't there a semicolon on the card text? Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yes. I, I think it I, is. I can't remember the order of the sets. Yeah, it's, it's not so much the order. You just have to look for the semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quite interesting tech. Uh, maybe he did get ah, yeah, yes, winter yeah, cherry during finish. during uh, during testing. Testing yeah. still, yeah. still, I think that. that Even so, yeah, it definitely deserves credit. Yeah, wow, that's a really really cool tech. And it looks cool. I like the look of it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean that would definitely be a big thing if he managed to summon yeah. that card. 
Well, the last time we had Jake, Jake Quincy on feature match uh, was in YCS Prague. That was the battle fader moment. The, the battle fader moment, exactly. So <laughs> when we, we may have... Uh, when his have opponent a, had the match, they went to time. Looked like he just has to attack for game, or for, for do, doing more damage than Jake had, or maybe even for game, I don't know exactly. No, it was for time, I think. Okay, yeah, and, and it seemed to him that there was nothing that Jake could have had to save himself, and that battle fader brought him one turn, and in, in turn, the match. Yeah, um, Thomas Rose opens another Ghost Reaper in 50 cards. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Very consistent opening. Very consistent, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we already got the hand of Jake. We got A, B, C, and another C, and a Union Scramble. Yeah. That should be a Union Hanger. No, Actually, no, no, he's playing Union Scramble. No, I mean... Oh, it should be. Yeah, yeah. 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 He would have preferred so, that. Yeah, he's just going to set Crush Wyvern and set Union Scramble. Oh, maybe not Union Scramble right now, but... Yeah. I think he needs, he needs to keep a hold of that Union Scramble. Yeah. This looks like a very traditional opening. Yeah, just Thomas Rose one. with his Chaos Hunter tech there. Oh, hold on. Did I just see a second of the No. No, okay. Just one. Yeah, I was watching a match on the Friday, you know, when we, we were walking around looking for deck profiles. Mm -hmm. And I saw a match where um, he went, Allure? Allure? Desires? Allure? <laughs> and I was just like, what? You're going to be deck out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pulling the trigger right away. Interesting. Yeah. Do you agree with that, or do you normally wait mm. and have you give your opponent that that yeah. little bit of hope before you crush their dreams? Yeah, I, th I I don't know why he did it straight away. Yeah. So gloves, boots, gloves, boots. I just need a woolly warm hat in the form of Dante. <laughs> Light ray sorcerer is the spiciest of texts. It's pretty spicy. Not so spicy mills there from Dante. Gonna attack into that Crush Wyvern. Crush Wyvern's effect is going to activate. Probably going to summon the Beavis to Drake. Yeah, I think Jake's in a bit of a pickle here. And for the rest of Europe that is not speaking British, he's in a tough spot. He's very. There we go. <laughs> Is that not something that people say in a pickle? I don't think so. No? Okay. Well, there we go. Pe people people learn cool English phrases, like in a pickle. I don't know why it's in a pickle. Like I don't know why it, why it would be so bad to be in a pickle. Depends what kind of pickle, I guess. Yeah, so this is looking pretty good for Thomas. Yeah. It's basically match one, but he didn't go in a chase. <laughs> so, pretty, pretty bad yeah. for Jake. It's like no other words for this, to be honest. No, I, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, Jake's options are limited. I, I can't really yep. delve into what he's going to do. I mean, we're going to see Beatrice here that's going to destroy the scam from the from the graph that was discarded. And the weird thing is that the Such ABC deck, of course, is not you uh, known for its inconsistency. No, it's known for being rather consistent. Yeah. But, but this is the thing. If he didn't get Winter Cherries, this would be fine. <laughs> He'd right. be in perfect position here. Yeah. So now what, do you, what does he want to draw? Uh, Light Ray Sorcerer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would be good. I wonder if he's actually got to play it at any point uh, during the weekend. Well, if if uh, YCS Prague is any indication, we're, we're definitely going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Jake <laughs> yeah. always making those amazing plays on the stream. W even if he loses, he's going to go down in history as a legend, basically. Yeah. So he's already seen the card. Whoa. 
What's going to come in? Just going to load in in a second. Solemn so strike. Not ideal. <laughs> yeah. Very bad draw. <laughs> Definitely not the best draw. No. So now Jake's basically said everything, almost everything. Yeah. He's left with uh, one of the ABC monsters in his hand, B Buster Drake. And on his field, he's got no, Union Scramble, Solemn Strike. He's got Assault Car in hand. Oh. Yes, of course. A, a Assault Core in hand. Buster Drake is now on the field. It was set next to the Crush Vivan. But um, those two back row cards, they wouldn't stay there for long. No, Twin Twisted. Yeah, Jake's in a real tough spot here now. He's not really got much going for him. Yeah, and Thomas has free reign, so to speak. He's yeah. able to just uh, assemble his field and his combo, make the most of them. Yeah, get tour guide. Searches guys. for a tour guide, yeah. That looks looks pretty good. Yeah, at least that's his end phase. And uh, some of you guys are asking about the breakdowns. Um, they are going to be on the written coverage, of course, where we're going to present all everything that we basically presented at the start of this uh, match, where we took a quick look at the top 32 breakdown and so on. Um, they're going to be in the written coverage very soon, and then you can check them out for as long as you want. It's the tour guide for the Rhino Warrior. Yeah, Thomas is just taking his time now. He and he yeah. can, of course. He can just. There's no way that Jake can threaten him for the time being, and there yeah. are very few cards that might change this. Yeah, absolutely nothing to <coughs> threaten him with. So he can just take his time, combo off or gain more and more advantage. Um, because he feels like he's got this. Yeah. Right. So there's Beatrice activation. What's the ideal way to finish things now? I think just slowly but surely, he's got to like take away everything that Jake has currently and then put himself in a situation where, regardless of what Jake draws, he will not lose. Right. And even now, I th even at this point with this board, there's very little, I think, that Jake can draw and then still be able to come yeah, back. Yeah, turn things around. Yeah, this is a point in time when very often... Um, might this, this, this might even be it here. This could be a break sword and then into um, Exceed Rebellion Dragon. Yeah, that's that's it. If that, I think, is the Dante? The, no, the Dante is only on 1,000. Yeah. Th it's going to be 25... Yeah. Uh, 25, he cannot, also, he cannot change the position of the Dante because it just came back this turn. Yeah, so 3, 2, 50... That's yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it well, like Exeter, not Dragon the most office. exciting of ends that we've ever had to a match. Yeah. Uh, was a Jake's bit of just a showing his hand here. That Yeah, that was rough. Yeah. There was a very slow burn in the end, and uh, Thomas Rose, clean sweep, 2-0 victory over Jake Quincy. All right, guys, let's talk about that some more in our post-game analysis. <laughs> 